I recently built a trading bot using Python. And as someone who never coded before, that was quite a challenge. I gave my bot a thousand dollars to trade with and let it run for a week on an Amazon cloud server. There is some obvious mistakes that I made, but we'll talk about that later in the video. All right, so before we start, I wanna make it clear that I am a complete beginner when it comes to coding. I learned some basic hello world uh, HTML CSS stuff in college, but that is where my knowledge ends. So what got me finally interested in the coding? Well, I do a lot of delta neutral trades, meaning I could buy one Bitcoin and at the same time also short one Bitcoin. This gives me a neutral position where my capital stays the same, no matter the price of one Bitcoin. My problem was that I didn't just want to market buy and market sell. Maybe for a highly liquid coin like Bitcoin, this wouldn't be such a problem. But as soon as you try to get into delta neutral positions with some lower liquidity coins, you can't just use market orders. There will be too much slippage and spread and you will just end up giving away money. This is why I got interested in coding. I want to eventually build a tool that will help me getting in and out of positions. Right now I'm doing it all manually and it takes a lot of time. So having a tool to help me and take away some of that screen time will be really, really helpful. But I can't just build that without knowing how to code. So I decided to sign up for an online Python course. By the way, the reason I chose Python was because a lot of people said it was the easiest to learn. And I figured as a complete beginner, the easy language might be a good start. For those that are interested, I am following the course 100 Days of Python. It's available on Udemy. And if you do a little search on Reddit, I'm pretty sure you can find a discount code. So you will only have to pay around $15 instead of 80 something. This is not sponsored or anything. I'm just sharing what I am using. So I learned some of the Python basics and it was pretty easy to follow along. Uh, and then I found this guy on YouTube. So a big shout out to Mundev because he posted videos of Python trading bots. So I binged some of his videos. I messed around with the code and I learned maybe more than I had learned in my Python course so far. So after learning a bunch of basics from my Udemy course and more crypto related stuff from Mundev, I decided to build a simple algo and let it run for a week. Before I show you the bot, let's talk about the strategy because obviously I had to think of something that my bot would do. So I came up with a very, very simple strategy. Uh, it's just a bunch of rules and I wanted to have a trend following bot. So basically I would check the trend uh, using the 50 SMA. It would either be a bear or a bull trend, meaning if price is above the 50 SMA, it will be a bear, uh, bull trend. And if it will be below, it'll be a bear trend. Then I would check the 20 SMA. Is this above or below the 50 SMA? Um, so just to make it super, super clear, let's say um, we are in a bull trend. Price is trading above the 50 SMA. I would then check if the 20 SMA is trading above the 50 SMA as an extra confirmation of a bull trend. I would also check if the 9 SMA uh, is trading above the 20. And then I would finally check if price is trading. In this case, you know, we're looking for a bull trend. So it's trading above the nine SMA. And that would be my final uh, confirmation that we are in a very bullish trend because all the SMAs are trading above each other and price is also trading above the final SMA. So here in this, in this case, I would enter into a long position. And just to make it a little bit clearer, this is the Bitcoin chart on the one hour. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So the, 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 the white line is the 50 SMA. So this is the, the, the trend defining line, basically. So right here, you can see that price is trading below the 50 SMA. So you could say this is a bearish trend. The yellow line is the 20 SMA, so it's a little bit uh, shorter term. And then the blue line is the 9 SMA, which is really just super short term. But in this case, you can see that uh, price is below the white line. The yellow line is below the white one and the blue one is below the yellow one. Plus price is trading below the uh, blue 9 SMA. So in this case, uh, my bot would trigger a short position here. I will also quickly show you my code. Now, please be aware that I am a complete beginner. So if you look at this and you're like, dude, why did you write it this way? Uh, I'm sure there are better ways to write this code, but hey, this is my first trading bot. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm quickly gonna go over the code and show you guys uh, what everything is doing and basically uh, what I expect my code to do. 
So I'm using CCXT, which is uh, a library for crypto trading. This is what I've learned. And basically what CCXT allows you to do is use commands like uh, fetch order book, uh, because normally Python wouldn't know what fetch order book means. But because I'm importing CCXT into my project, uh, fetch order book is actually something that Python now recognizes and I can actually, you know, work with it. So this is basically what CCXT does. It gives you a whole library of usable commands that you can now use to uh, yeah, get, get data from an exchange or place orders, uh, stuff like that. I also used uh, Pandas. This is the first time I've used Pandas, which is a data frame. And you can see right here that I fetched a whole bunch of data from FTX. And using pandas, I then put it into a nice data frame uh, with the open, uh, the highs, the lows, and the closes of the one hourly candles. So using that data frame, I then calculated the SMAs by using a rolling function, which basically just averages things out. But that's what the moving average is anyway. So this right here takes the average of the close of the last 51 hour bars. Then I have my bot function here, which is the actual trading part. Um, yeah, I did a whole bunch of stuff here, fetching positions to check if I'm already in a position or not. Uh, here it checks the SMAs, you know, so you check the trend. If the bid is above the SMA, then, you know, I go into my little uh, triple check. It checks if I already have a position open or not. And then either I close out my previous short um, or I just open a normal long and vice versa for the short part. That's basically my code. I also did a little part here where it uh, calculates my current PL just because I wanted to see how much money I was making or losing. I then scheduled everything to run every five minutes. Uh, so every five minutes it would check. Um, I didn't really need to do it more often because I'm trading on the one hour chart anyway. So I could have even done this every hour, I think. Uh, I just did it every five minutes. And then every 15 minutes, it does the PL function, which uh, fetches my current PL. And yeah, I basically let this run into an Amazon server uh, for a week. Now, was this the best strategy? Probably not. Is it the cleanest code? Fuck no. But the point is that I learned a lot from writing this myself. So how did the bot do? Well, like I said, I actually let it run for a full week with $1,000 and I lost $110. So let's talk about what happened. Obviously, the strategy is not perfect. Um, I wanted something long term that would follow along with the trend. And while this works, there are a lot of false signals, especially because I'm waiting for that triple confirmation. If the signal is false, then my entry really sucks because I'm buying or selling relatively late in the trend already. So I quickly found out that this strategy would just slowly drain my funds and wreck me in a ranging or sideways market. And I did realize that before I made this, uh, because the point was to be kind of neutral and waiting and lose a little bit of money here and there and then catch the big ups and downs. I just didn't realize how often the trend, or at least what I defined as the trend, would switch in a sideways market. The funny thing is I would have actually made some money again if I let my bot run. So just to show you, um, I think I turned on my bot around here. So I started around here and you can see that price is trading below the white, below the yellow, below the blue. So here my bot actually went short. And right here, this is like one day later, you can see that it completely flipped. So price is trading above the blue, above the yellow, above the white. So here my bot closed out my short position and I uh, went long instead. But just as I bought and I went long here, price completely dropped again. So this was a false signal. So I took a little loss here and I think around here, my bot went short again, because again, price is trading below the, the blue one, below the yellow one and below the white one. So here I went short again. Um, but then here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Here, <laughs> you can see that price is trading above the blue, above the yellow, above the white. So here my bot closed that short position and it went long again, thinking that the trend flipped. But what happened, you know, price continued to drop. So this is what I mean with false signals. Um, it would just constantly close and open positions in a, low, in a losing position. Um, and around here, I think, 
I opened another long position and this is when I completely shut down my bot. Now you can see that right here, um, I actually shut it off right before Bitcoin took a very big bump. And if I didn't turn off my bot, I would have actually gotten in here. And let me check. Right here, price is trading below the, uh, below the blue, below the yellow and below the white. So here I would have closed for a 10% profit. So <laughs> you can see that I actually would have made a little bit of money again if I didn't shut off my bot. Now, the reason I took that $100 loss and turned off my bot was because I had an error. Uh, I haven't looked into it yet, but it gave me some sort of error when I tried to go long here. And when I checked, the bot was long two times the position that I wanted. So obviously something went wrong there. Uh, that's the reason I shut down the bot, because it wasn't functioning exactly as I was expecting. So could I have prevented this? Yes. First of all, I really shouldn't have used $1,000 especially for testing purposes, 20 or $50 will be just fine to see if the bot works and does what I want. Secondly, I could have backtested this strategy and implemented something that wouldn't give me uh, that many false signals. The problem here is that I don't know how to do that yet. I'm learning about backtesting as we speak, and I think there are some Python libraries to create backtesting data frames, but this was simply a limitation of my current knowledge, and that is okay because the whole reason I did this was to learn about Python and experience hands-on what it's like to write a crypto bot. If you've watched this video and you're interested in Python or writing your own bot, all I can say is just go for it. If I can learn this stuff and build crappy strategies, then so can you. And with time, things can only get better. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.